Tonight I want to talk to the church about the uh, danger of lukewarmness. The danger of lukewarmness. I want to call your attention to the third chapter of Revelation. What is lukewarmness to some of you? Or what is lukewarm? What is lukewarm? Straddling the fence. What else? A little hot and a little cold. A little hot, a little cold. Mm -hmm. Both good answers. Anyone else? In this third chapter of Revelation, God instructed John to write letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. And this is one church that uh, God really had. Well, he had problems with most of all of them except two. But um, this one, he, he had problems with their lukewarmness had problems, major problems with their lukewarmness, straddling the fence, uh, saying they one thing and doing another thing. Do y'all hear me tonight? Amen. And so this church goes down in history as being a lukewarm church. Lukewarm church, historically. Amen. So, uh, you, you, you'll read some of the text shortly, but they, in, their, in this text, they felt that they were rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing. What kind of goods did they have? They had pharmacies, they dealt with medicine, they uh, had a production of an eye ointment, excuse me, an eye ointment on eye salve that they sold. They sold wool and they manufactured it and they had banking industries, they just had it going on financially, so they felt like, I don't need all that God stuff, let me go to church about 45 minutes and go on about my business, to take care of business, to bring me more money, more money, more money. Amen, somebody. Amen, you, have, you might have some materialistic stuff, but you could be spiritually broke down and in poverty. Am I right about it? Yeah. So they were famous for their eye salve, or their eye ointment, their wool, their linens, their uh, distribution of all the stuff they were manufacturing, their banking industries, but they were poor in spirit. Amen. We might have gifts, talents, we might live in Carmel, might live in Fishers, might live on guys. Amen. But if you don't know the Lord, you're still poor. Amen, somebody. So, so they were known for all this money making all their industries, industrials, but they were poor in spirit. And so let's go to Revelation, the third chapter, uh, verse uh, 14, verse 14. Amen. Let us read it all together. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, said the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of of God. Number one, as I reiterate with you every week, who is the angel of the church that he's writing to? The pastor, the shepherd, the under shepherd, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you all to understand as I emphasize every week or whenever I touch on this kind of lesson, uh, 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 the pastor has an obligation to try to help you to live right. Because when the Lord gets ready to write to the church, he's going to write to the pastor. And he's going to get the pastor if the pastor is allowing the church to just do whatever it chooses to do. Amen. On a spiritual manner and still run around here calling yourself saved. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Amen. 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 So the pastor has an obligation to try to get everybody in the house of God to straighten up and walk right and live holy. All right. Amen. Amen. So, 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 uh, uh, the pastor should be somewhat like God. It's not our will that any man perish. Yes, Amen. This gospel should build men. Amen. To want to do the right thing. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. And so Jesus here in the uh, 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 in this 14th verse is called the Amen. The Amen. Y you heard it right there. And to the angel that was there, see it, write these things, say it, the Amen. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Say it the amen. The true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Somebody talked to me about that. What is, well, why is he calling himself the amen? No, look at your outline. I've already given it to you uh, for your own study and leisure. Uh, but I want you to give me your interpretation uh, of it without looking at what I've given you. My interpretation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
He has the final say. He has the final say. What he says goes. What he says is absolute. Ain't no taking it back. He's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and omega. And whatever he says, so be it. Say it the amen. Say it the amen. This is an unusual name for him, but he has the final say. And if he said, this is what I want you to do, this is what we must do. There's no options. There's no, you might have an opinion, but there's no options. There's no difference. If God says the sky is blue, the sky is blue. Amen. Amen. Ain't no need in you or me trying to argue and debate with God because your arms are too short. Amen. The box with God. And so here he says here, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. So let's move on here. He sees right into this church. And what does he say in verse 15? I know thy works. I know thy works. The first four words. I know thy works. I want everybody in here tonight, right now, this very second, examine your works. Examine your works. Says the amen. Says the amen. What's he saying? What's he saying? First thing he says is, 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 is uh, I know thy works. I want you to examine your own works right now. Examine them in your mind because your works will follow you the rest of your life and into eternity. First thing he tells his church of the lady to see him, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. I wish you would be one or the other. I wish you would either get in or get out. I wish you would follow me or follow him. Amen. I wish you would serve me or serve him. You know, I, you know, I would rather you make up your mind to come my way when you're ready to come my way. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Cold or hot, the Laodicea church was a self-satisfied church. This church is historically known as a lukewarm church. How many like drinking lukewarm coffee? How many like drinking? Well, I know, I know now you get cold coffee, so I, you know, I ain't in no cold coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, no how. But uh, cold coffee, and they making all kind of money at Starbucks on cold coffee. Amen. But I would rather my coffee be hot. Amen. 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 Somebody, I would rather my hot chocolate be hot chocolate. Amen. If I want cold chocolate milk, that's what I want. Amen. When you take a shower, you don't take a cold and something's wrong with you. Right. Amen. Yeah. And you don't take a scalding hot one or you will scar your skin. Amen. Amen. You mix it where it's a good hot shower, not lukewarm. Amen. But a good mix. I mean, no, God don't even want you to have a good mix. He wants you to be one or the other. Amen. Mixing in and trying to blend in with the world, yet be in the church. Well, Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. Uh, trying to do the things that the world does and do the same thing the church does. God is not pleased with that. That's lukewarmness. Having more time spent in your own personal stuff and your own personal efforts. And I'm not trying to knock anybody if you're in business. Having time to spend in your own businesses, amen, rather than spending time with God. Amen. Let me say this, and some of us are rich and increased with goods, not so much business, but the enemy has um, uh, 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 given us so many things to do today. The internet has a multiplicity of things that we can t that takes up our time. Yes, yes. Amen. How Facebook gonna get more time than God? All right, come on. What do you mean, preacher? Well, you know, I'm on Facebook myself, but Facebook uh, is for, to, to me not so much of a social network, but a, a network of the, the stuff that's going on in this church for me. Free of charge. I didn't have to buy no radio time. That's reason I told the church that's on Facebook. Tag me. Put this thing out there. And if y'all had done it, a few of you did, thank you. But the, if the whole church had done it, probably would have put putting chairs down the aisle. Because that's the way to go today. But not to sit up and take hours and hours and hours and ain't prayed at all. That's causing a lukewarm spirit.